Hi, I'm Lamar Wise. My wife Karen and I have been supporting members, patrons of Galleon uh, Community Theater for, oh, the 15 or so years that we've lived in Galleon. I'm also a volunteer musician in the orchestra for most of those years at least. So I thought today I'd share a little bit about what we do, what the orchestra does, what happens in the pit. The pit, what's the pit? Well, the pit is really two things. There is an orchestra pit and there is a pit orchestra. <laughs> Sounds a little confusing, but one's the place, one's the people. So let's talk about uh, why it's called a pit. So the idea of the orchestra is that unlike children who are supposed to be seen but not heard, the orchestra is supposed to be heard but not seen. So the orchestra sits typically in a pit, literally down in a hole. Typically that is in front of the stage, but in this case we're to the side. But orchestra pits were normally in front of the stage, even would sometimes go under the stage. The director would stand in front and the pit would be down, down low. So the ultimate compliment for an orchestra or for the pit is that well, I didn't even notice them. Now our egos can handle that, but uh, that's, that's the ideal that we complement the show, we add to it, but we don't detract from it. We don't in ourselves become the stars. They're on stage. And that's why we wear black as I am wearing today. Again, the lights are on in the front. And so we wanna be as subdued and as invisible as possible. So we wear black in the pit. Most of us, every now and then somebody decides, well, it's close enough, but uh, we're supposed to wear black, we'll say that. So who's here? This is the pit uh, here, I'm sitting in the pit. And in the pit, typically there's seven to 10 of us here at, at GCT. The music director is at the front. We're all facing that direction. The piano is the key instrument in the pit and it sits next to the music director. The keyboard that I play here uh, sits typically in this location. Then we have combinations of the flute, clarinet, trumpet, sometimes trombone, uh, always percussion, um, just depends on the show what's included, but we need a bass instrument of some kind that's been guitar, trumpet, I mean, not trumpet, trombone, and tuba. And uh, that, that kind of makes up the group. Uh, we had a harp for one of the shows, but it gets pretty crowded when you add percussion in a harp. Uh, we're not a very big area. So uh, that's, those are the people that make it up, but we can't get all the sounds that the score calls for. That's where the keyboard comes in. And we have two excellent instruments. When I started playing here, we had an old upright piano in the front, and then the keyboard was whatever we could get from the school or something from the theater, usually used my own. But a few years ago, we got two wonderful keyboards, digital piano slash keyboards. And these in fact were both uh, from donated funds to the theater. So we have two wonderful instruments. And again, one typically plays a piano part and one plays other parts. Sometimes these can be solos, depends what the score calls for. Some shows have keyboard scores in which, calls, in which they call for a lot of different sounds. Sometimes I'm just one instrument. For example, I'm a violin or the, the string section. So I thought maybe you'd wanna see uh, what some of the sounds that can come out of this. And so for example, strings are most, com most, most common. And here's a little bit from Beauty and the Beast with the string sound. Those are strings. And again, that's the most common instrument uh, that uh, I do. But in uh, Beauty and the Beast, there is a scene that uh, calls for the celeste. Harp is another one that's common. A little bit of that, also from Beauty and the Beast.
you also sometimes hear glissandos down or more commonly up. So those are the harp, celesta, strings, lots of other instruments. Uh, I can be an accordion, I can be a solo oboe, uh, I can augment the brass, do a lot of different things. Also in Elf, the most recent show, I was bells. That was the handbell sound in, uh, in Elf, if you might recall. The other thing that's called for is quick changes. So in a keyboard score, you play a lot of different instruments and they're just, it's changing all the time. This instrument, the reason we got these two instruments is because they have quick set buttons. On an organ, we would call them presets. Here, they're just uh, registration settings. So I can very quickly put in 10 different sounds that I'm gonna use in the show, the most common sounds, and I can very quickly, with just the push of a button, hit them and become immediately another instrument. So that's the wonderful uh, aspect of these. A lot of keyboards don't have that capability, so uh, it's something we use here a lot. Thought I would talk a little bit about the orchestra. How do we prepare for a show? Well, usually a month or so ahead, we get our individual scores. So we can practice on our own a little bit, get familiar with the score. Then about two weeks before a show, we come in as we are available to attend rehearsals as they start running the full show. And that gets us familiar with each other, with the score, with, uh, with the cast and kind of what's happening. Then the week before the show is what we call tech. And that's when they're working on lights and all the other things. I think some of that was explained before. And we are here for that whole time because we're running the show like everybody else, learning our parts and getting the cast used to us and us used to them. And so uh, that happens the week before a show, the day before the show opens and is a full dress rehearsal. And then we begin the shows uh, for usually two, sometimes three weekends, depending on the show. Now the orchestra starts and ends the show. And again, I, as I said, the compliment is, I didn't even really notice the orchestra. But the orchestra at the beginning, it's called the overture. We start the show, you hear some of the theme music. We open the second act typically, the entracte is again, a little bit of the music from the first act usually, and then leads into the second act. At the end of the show, we play the bow music and the exit music. Sometimes we get a little applause at the end if we're really good. Uh, you'll notice that the actors during the bows will acknowledge the lights, they'll acknowledge the orchestra. So uh, that's, uh, the recognition that we get and that's all we need. So if we've done a good job, they're happy, we're happy. Now, one of the things about GCT that I think is really special is that we maintain the use of a live orchestra here. So many places have gone to canned music or track. So the advantage of that, first of all, it's an authentic sound. That's the way the shows were meant to be produced, is to have the sounds of real instruments. Well, in big production shows, that's very expensive. Orchestras get paid, and uh, so it's very expensive to have an orchestra, and so a lot of them have just dropped that. GCT continues that, and they can do that partly because we volunteer our time. The rehearsal pianist gets paid something because they're here for, you know, literally months <laughs> preparing for the show. But we're all volunteers, and we make that commitment because live music in a musical is so important and so special. So we're committed to that uh, as musicians, as volunteers, and the theater's committed to that. And I think that's one of the thing that makes, things that makes GCT very special in its musical productions. Now, one of the things in the pit is a mirror. And I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but some people will say, even actors sometimes will say, well, why do you, why do you have a mirror? Well, that's so that, well, two things, I guess. One, so that we can watch the show when we're not playing. Depending where we're sitting, we can see a good share of the stage. Where I sit, I can just see a little bit of it. But the other reason is that sometimes we need to know what's happening on stage. Now, for the most part, that's the responsibility of the conductor or the music director. He or she is watching the stage, so they're looking for the scene changes, they're looking for things that happen and cue the rest of us. But there are times that it's helpful for us too to see when something happens on stage, but for the most part, um, it's, it's so that we can watch the show and it's a nice little uh, feature that we've had. And as I said, the advantage of live orchestra is that we're here and we can adjust to a show. 
and, and what's happening. We're, we are flexible. So uh, one of the ways that happens is when something happens on stage that's unexpected. So it could be that somebody drops a line, comes in early, entrance, their entrance is late, something happens on stage and we have to adjust. Now, if you're with canned music, you can't do anything about it, it just goes. If you're just the pianist, a show with just a piano, the pianist can pretty well adjust and that helps here. The pianist here has the script so they can tell if somebody's skipping lines or if something happened and they can help prepare. But the rest of us are in the dark. We're just looking at a sheet of paper with notes on it. So between the music director and the pianist, they can pretty much get us back in and figure out what's going on and communicate with us. And that's in a variety of ways. Sometimes they can whisper, sometimes it's hand signals, a measure. And then it's always that famous uh, little line that somebody in the pit, where are we? Where are we? So we try to communicate among each other, whoever knows, but usually that comes from the music director and or the pianist to kind of get us uh, back in line. But the other thing, again, I will say the quality of musicians here at GCT, a lot of times we know, and when we've sat through the show then for a week and, and usually some prior shows and something happens, we've done it enough and we're good enough, I guess, not saying that in a bragging way, it's a compliment to the theater and to the community, the musicians that we have, that we can make those adjustments. But that's, again, advantage of a live orchestra is that you're flexible, you can adjust to the things that happen. That's why it's called live theater. I thought another area that you might be interested in is how does the orchestra know what to do during scene changes, during dialogue when we're playing under that? Again, you're not supposed to notice us, but we're a lot of times playing as there's dialogue going on stage, we're playing during scene changes, so the orchestra has what's called a vamp. And vamps are those points in the music where we, we repeat, we can go back. Some are written in, some we create, frankly. That's one of the secrets from the pit. Oh, I didn't tell you, that's what we call this, is secrets from the pit. No, it's, uh, we, we can't tell you all of our secrets, but you're getting some of them today. So one of the secrets of the pit is that we have places where we go back and we can repeat as long as we need to. If the scene change is taking longer or shorter, the music director is watching, the conductor is watching the stage and signals to us either with stop or you know go on, uh, any number of signals that we have that, uh, and it varies by the music director too, uh, what our signals are for when we're supposed to move on in the music, when we just come to a stop, uh, when the at the points in the dialogue and things like that. So we're working a lot of times when, again, you're probably not aware of us and that's a good thing. I thought I would share some stories from the pit. Now the secrets, well, what happens in the pit stays in the pit, but I can still share some stories. And for the most part, uh, the names will not be revealed to protect the guilty, but uh, things do happen in here. And again, uh, live theater is, you know, we go with whatever happens, but. You know, there are stories about flying batons and flying pencils. Are they intentional or not? Well, that's either a mystery or a secret, but uh, that's all you're going to hear. But they do occasionally, things do fly around in the pit. Of course, snacks are an important part of any pit. Uh, they should be noiseless snacks, especially the bags, but not everybody always remembers that. But uh, we do usually have a stash and we always uh, get criticized for the mess that we leave here. But you know, it takes a lot of energy to play in the pit. So, you know, we need to have a little uh, nutrition during the time. And there is one story about a keyboard player who again shall go unnamed. But, you know, I had a day type, uh, oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, forget that, forget that part. But uh, the keyboard player, you know, had a busy day job. And, you know, these shows are at night, we're tired. And there was a pretty long time where there was just a lot of dialogue and the keyboard player got closer and closer and just drifting, 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 and all of a sudden there was like... <laughs> now, if that doesn't create a pall among the group, uh, I don't know what, but everybody just kind of like was horrified and couldn't acknowledge it. And of course, I, I mean, the person, you know, just kind of ignored like nothing really happened, but uh, uh, that will be a memory that uh, I will never, never, I mean, that that person will never, ever forget. 
So we have a great time. The pit becomes its own little community. Uh, yes, we're part of the whole production, but uh, we're our own little uh, little group in here. And, and so a lot of good things happen. A lot of great music is played, but some fun things and funny things and uh, uh, other uh, stories and events that uh, some you know about, some will remain the secrets of the pit. So that's a little bit about who we are and what we do in the pit. You know, if you have questions about anything with the theater, productions, the pit, just message on Facebook uh, to the theater and they'll answer your questions. The theater needs your support now. Musicals are the biggest audience draws for the theater, which means that's the biggest ticket revenue source. Those are not happening. So that revenue has to come in other ways. And right now, that's part of our campaign to fill the seats. So please, please consider donating, going online to the, to the Fill the Seats uh, campaign at galleontheater.org slash donate. And again, theater is T-R-E, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. Uh, so in case the dress isn't coming up, that might be it. But galleontheater.org slash donate to contribute to the Fill the Seats campaign because they're not being filled by the big musical. Hunchback of Notre Dame was planned for June. That will not be happening. So please, please, to allow the kind of productions that we've had here at GCT and we want to continue to have, the kind of instruments that we have to keep this theater running, we really need your support. So please, please donate to continue to enjoy music from the pit now that you know the secrets from the pit. Okay, Lamar, can you play us out? Oh, sure. Um, how about a little sentimental journey? That's actually from a movie by the same name, 1949, uh, most known as a popular song that was uh, sung by Doris Day. So a little sentimental journey to take us out. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed and you learned a little bit. Some things you'll think about the next time you attend a show.